Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. For there's coming a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness. God commands you to repent. He commands you to give up all your sin. He commands you to walk in righteousness. Live a holy life. Oh, go ahead, Chris. What's up, man? What's up? I've just never oh, seen no, you guys on this camp. No. What, what are you guys the about? The unrighteous will not uh, inherit just, you know, the kingdom of God. Of Christ, and, uh, I'm not, I'm not Do from not be California. deceived. Oh, nice. What part? Just, neither uh, fornicators. Nice. And those guys, neither, so, yeah. neither idolaters. So you guys kind of travel around, or you're just or here? Or homosexuals. Oh, just, or sodomites. Well, I'm the one traveling, but I'm going to go back home nor soon. Nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor violers, nor extortioners. With this guy just preaching. Are you know. guys believe the same type of now, stuff? Now, for the Christian, yeah. it goes on in verse 11. Believe Sorry, is it like what, like what kind of religion? Is it like extreme Christianity? Or is just, what, is, what are you guys we're dealing with? Well, it's but you've been extreme. washed. Just, you know, you've been sanctified. You've been justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I see it more of a relationship than a religion. Now, why do you think it says to be justified in the name of the Lord Jesus? Why do you think it says that they're sanctified in so the yeah, Spirit of God? Yeah, basically, in our human condition, has it's things going on. A lot, a lot more sinning going on in this kind of. Uh, it's our human condition that causes sin. And turn to living in holiness. So you don't think of that living as being just part of life, part of as that is just being part a of a human, though. A lot of people will say that everybody sins every day. You guys think it's, it's, it's bad? It's, it's sins? Like I kind of feel like it's just kind of part of being human. Yeah, but I don't think it's something we should continue with. You don't think? No, because really. It's, it's just not good for us. It's just God would want us to like live according to His standards and try to Why do you under, why, why do you feel that? Like why do you think God would want you to not live life the way that life is being lived now? If you really want to know what the Bible says, you, know, you really want to know. He hates the way we live. So he hates, why do you, why though? Why do you know that? Because there are things that are sinful, exactly things that go against Him that that He doesn't want us when to commit. Even though we commit it, you know, He just wants us to turn away. from And I'm just curious. I don't have. I just kind of am not really had much experience with this type of ideology. So. So where where you get the impression that that, that is what needs to that is churches. these are sins and this is okay? Is there is it like all from the Bible, like biblical? Yeah, biblical. Okay, is it it's, it's, it's scriptures? So it's kind of like interpretation of biblical scriptures, because it doesn't really seem like a lot of the stuff you guys are preaching is actually written out clearly in the Bible the way that it's being preached. A lot of it is though. Saying that you can go it is. And then there's other things from the Bible, biblical perspective that that align with our experiences and stuff. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible says, do you not... Okay. This guy does, this guy's good at his job right here. He really he knows it. brings in a crowd. All right. I appreciate the time. God bless you, man. Not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Save, save this one. But in accordance with your hardness and the penance of your heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance of doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality, but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth. Oh, he's an interesting oh, character. Man. But obey unrighteousness, an character. indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Bible says to repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. Like I was saying, the Bible says to repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says to repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The 
Bible says to wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, says the Lord. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. And this is the message that we have heard from God and declare to you that God is light and it is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Little children, these things are written unto you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation means atonement. And not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now it's by this right here that we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17, Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, Amen. the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. He who sins is not the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And he wants to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Meaning, he calls you to go and sin no more. Like Jesus Christ said to two different people in John's Gospel. One to a man who was sick of 38 years of some infirmity. And Jesus came to him in the synagogue. When he, when he comes, you know, before the, 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 the pool of Bethesda. Because they could come, people could come to this pool with their infirmities. And there was an angel that would stir up the waters, and when they got into the waters, they'd be cleansed and healed of their infirmity. But this man was so sick, he couldn't even walk. And Jesus came to him and knelt down to him and said, Do you want to be healed? And the man said, Sir, I have no one to lift me up to carry me into the waters when the, when the angel stirs up the water. And Jesus said to him, Take your bed, rise up and walk. And that man was healed in an instant. And he, and he rose up and he took up his bed and he walked into the synagogue and one of the Pharisees found him and said, it's, not, it's against our law for you to carry your bed because it was a Sabbath. And that was the Jewish law that nobody could carry their bed while they were in the temple. So Jesus found him later and he said, you're well now, you've been healed. So go and sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you. Later on in John chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus came into the, the temple and there was a woman there that was about to be stoned to death because the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they had found this woman and caught her in adultery. Now, they had picked up literal physical stones and they were about to stone this woman as dictated by the Jewish law. And they saw Jesus standing there and they said, this woman should be stoned to death because she's been caught in adultery. Our law says so. And they said to him, now teacher, what do you say? And he looked at him and he said, whatever one of you is, has no sin may cast the first stone at her. 
And one by one, they started setting their, their physical stones down because they knew if they stoned her, they'd be in hypocrisy because they were all guilty of sin. Jesus came to the woman and said to her, is there no one left to condemn you? And she said, no one, Lord. She called him Lord. And he said, well, I do not condemn you either, but go and sin no more. See, he told two people to stop their sinning, to go and sin no more, to cease from all sin. Now the Bible says, to enter in by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. How you doing there? Doing okay. I got a call that you're out here doing a demonstration which you're within your First Amendment rights to do. Right. Um, my question is, did you contact anybody at like university events, anything like that, to get some kind of permit to let us know you're going to be out here doing this? I do. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so if that's the case, man, I'm going to have to ask that you do that in the future. Okay. But you can't be doing this today without that permit. Okay? I am. I am saying yes. Oh, okay. Can I grab ideas from you guys? Um, no, can I get a name uh, from you? This yeah. Is your name on this? Yeah, it's not on that, but my name's Adam Young. Adam Young? Okay. Yeah, like I said, man, I'm, I'm not here to try to infringe on your First Amendment rights. You're more than welcome to do so. We just need to go through those proper avenues to do so, right? Well, we need to go through university so Anybody who wants to have any sort of demonstration or set up a, a booth or anything like that in this area, we're just we, coming to preach the gospel at public school. I, I understand that. But, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think I need to leave right now. Okay. I give you my idea if I can get a Are you a student here at the university? I'm a resident of Oh, basically. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, for Mesa, you just up here just to preach or what do you got going on? Okay. You up here for the weekend? Uh, just for today, actually. Oh, just for today? Yeah, just for today. And then, what's your name, man? Uh, I go by Alex. I'm from, well, my legal name is Manuel, but I'm not from here. I'm from another state. I'm from California. Okay. Manuel, well, what's your last name? Uh, Zarate. 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 It's Z A. Man, I was going to say, I don't know how to spell that. Z A. Z A. R A. T E. T E. to ask you to leave, and if you refuse to do so, then to go the route of warning you of, of trespassing, okay? But and then at that point, so with it being a, a public campus, um, Arizona Board of Regents has given uh, us the power to trespass people from the campus who are not affiliated with them. Really? That is correct. Is there a statute? You are being given a reasonable request to leave, real property, third degree trespass. We're giving you the, the reasonable request to leave. Yeah. If you choose not to do so, then at that time we can take the Okay, I understand that, but would you be able to give me the statute? Yeah, it's trespass. Third, third, third degree trespass. In ARS? Yeah. Yeah, let me pull it up. It's title 13, I believe it's 1201. Let me double check. I have it right here, dude. Arizona state law gives us the, wow. basically as a, we're, we're in a unique position as the university rules, okay, because we enforce state law, right. and we also act as agents of the university, okay, so when we do so, and 13-1502A, 1502A, okay, but so, 
we're in that unique position where we're acting as agents of the university where we get calls that there's a disturbance regardless of the uh, the message that's being given we're being told there's a disturbance we come out we find out that you're not affiliated with the university we can taxpayer though so okay this is taxpayer funded okay. partially not totally at all, but partially okay that's what makes that's why i stay at school okay. i have a right to be here this is what this is much to the okay so mr young i'm asking you to leave. i know you're asking me to leave okay if you choose not to leave then we will arrest you for trespassing So, like I said, all I'm asking, nothing, I can get you, you guys, okay. I can get you the, the number to university events, so you can give them a call. That way, when you want to come out and you want to uh, and you want to demonstrate, we can actually come out and give you, you know, resources as far as because if you if you were out here doing this during like a class change, right? Yeah. Um, there's going to be people that on both sides of the fence that you know this is a very divisive topic, right? Regardless, it doesn't. So this, this isn't so, the first so it time somebody has so come out here and, and done something like this. It is? This isn't. This, no, this isn't. isn't the first time. Okay. This has okay. happened no. before, but there's people that, that take the right route and yeah. then they're able to come and do something. Let's do this. And then when someone does call and go, hey, these folks are out here, I don't like what they have to say, mm -hmm. we go, well, they've gone through all the right avenues. They have that right to assemble and they have the right to say what they're saying. It's okay. protected speech. And they've gone through the right avenues to do so, so they're allowed to do that. All right. Okay. Yeah. And that allows us to give you some protection as well. Okay. 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 Yep. We won't give you a hard time. We're going to leave. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'll look into it. Appreciate the information, officers. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for your, what you do. No. Thank yeah. you. We appreciate yeah. it. Guys, have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.